This is the video on section 3.3 dealing with the zeros of polynomials. So the first thing that we want to talk about is the factor theorem. The factor theorem basically says if you have a polynomial f of x and if x minus k is a factor, then f of k will equal zero. And you can also go backwards. If you know that f of k is equal to zero, then x minus k is going to be a factor. And we'll talk about what that looks like here in just a moment. So take a look at example number one. It says determine whether x plus four is a factor of each polynomial. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna use synthetic substitution on this. And we're going to list out our coefficients. Don't forget that you have a zero placeholder for the x cubed term, since there is no x cubed term. Since we are going to be looking at the factor x plus 4, then whatever is going to go in your box over here is what x equals. So if you take x plus 4 and you get x alone, um, solve for x and get an x equals negative 4, that's what always goes in the box. We talked about synthetic substitution in section 3.2, so you can go back to that section if you forget how to do this. All right, so then um, we're going to, the very first thing is, is that we're gonna bring our um, leading coefficient straight down, and then we'll multiply by the box. So bring it down, you have that three, multiply by the box, you get negative 12. Take your negative 12 and add it to zero. So you're going to get negative 12, and then you're going to start over again. Multiply by the box, you get 48. Add, you get 0. Multiply by the box, you get 0. Add, you get 8. Multiply the by the box, you get negative 32. And add, you get 0. So we would say that, yes, uh, x plus 4 is a factor of this polynomial. Now let's go to part B, and I what I would do if I were you is, since part B is going to be worked exactly the same way as part A was, I would pause the video and see if you can work this out on your own without my help. All right, so if you are just now unpausing the video, let's take a look at what you would get here. First thing is let's list out all of our coefficients. Make sure you've accounted for every single term. And then we're going to try to plug in an x equals negative four. We wanna know whether or not this is a factor. Okay, so bring down your one, multiply by the box. Um, add, you get two. Multiply the box, you get negative eight. Add, you get three. Multiply the box, you get negative 12. Add, you get zero. Multiply the box, you get zero. Add, you get five. Multiply the box, you get negative 20. Negative 20 and negative 20 does not give you zero. It gives you negative 40. So here we would say that x plus 4 is not a factor of our polynomial. All right, so then let's step it up a notch. And this time, um, we are told that we've got a, a, a polynomial. Here's our polynomial. But number one, we're asked to factor it. And number two, we're told what one of our zeros is we're told that five is a zero. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a list of zeros and I already know that x equals five is a zero. I already know that. So, um, because I'm told that it is and they're not going to lie to me about that. All right, so let's use synthetic. We'll go ahead and get our coefficients and we're going to try out our x equals five. Remember, whatever goes in the box, is the number that x equals. So pull down your six, multiply the box, you get 30. Add, you get negative seven, multiply the box, you get negative 35. Add, you get negative three, multiply the box, you get negative 15, add and you get zero. So it's not a surprise that my remainder is zero. This is what it needs to be because we're told that x equals five is a zero. So the very first thing that we want to do in our, in our um, process of getting factors is to just prove that the zero they told me is a zero really is a zero. Okay, 
Well, now what I notice is that, whoops, now what I notice here is that my depressed polynomial is a quadratic. We know how to solve quadratics. We did this in chapter one and we did this in chapter two. So we have quite a, we have five methods at least of solving quadratics. Remember we have um, solved by the zero factor property. We have solved by completing the square. We have solving by the quadratic formula, by the square root method, and by graphing. We're not going to use graphing. And since we have to get factors, the best way to go about this is to use factoring. All right, so all I'm going to do is write my quadratic. So you notice here, this is where my numbers are coming from. Set it equal to zero. And like I said, we're going to factor. So once I factor this out, 2x minus 3, 3x plus 1. Um, then it's really easy to know uh, what my factors are because I just got finished listing them. Now, this particular question did not ask me to find the other zeros, but it's really easy to find the zeros if I know what the factors are. Again, from chapter one and chapter two, we know if we have something like this, finding zeros is quite simple. And so if I solve each of my mini equations here, I'm going to get x equals 3 halves and x equals negative 1 third. That gives me my two remaining zeros. Now, let's go and figure out what the factors are. And I'm going to write these in a couple different ways, um, just so that you can see some of the options. If x equals 5 is a 0, then x minus 5 is a factor. Um, if x equals 3 halves is a 0, x minus 3 halves is a factor. If x equals negative 1 third, then x plus 1 third is a factor. All right, so I have two different ways that I could look at this. Um, option number one, I could use the first factor I found, which was x minus 5, and then notice that these other two factors I found were what I had from over here. By the way, they correspond with these two factors. Okay, they're not the same thing, but they're almost the same. And then option number two for factoring into linear factors, which is what the directions told me to do. Option number two is that I could just multiply, sorry about that, I could multiply these three factors together. So we'll start with that, multiplying those three factors together. But notice if I do that, one thing that has to match is the leading coefficient has to match the leading coefficient. You say, well, but the problem is, is that in option number one, there is no six out front. And you're correct in saying so. However, if you take this leading coefficient times this leading coefficient, two times three, you will get that six that matches. So this is two different ways of factoring into linear factors. You can use this option where we used our factoring property, or you can turn your three zeros into factors, multiply your three zeros together, make sure that the leading coefficient matches the original leading coefficient. All right, that's gonna be the end of this first video. There should be three more to follow.